Hello and welcome to Tutorial to You. My name is Yannick and in this video I want to show you how you can use multi-threading in C Sharp and why it is important. Now here we have a clean console application and a simple method which adds two numbers. So basically what happens when we start the application is that a new thread will get created inside of a process. So as soon as we start our program, a process will get created and inside there our main thread will get created. Well, the main thread is like the first thread or as its name already suggests, the main thread where our program runs in or where the code gets executed in. As you can see, we have a main method. As soon as we start the application, the main thread will get created and this code runs inside of it. Now just assume that you have a process or a method which is really taking a lot of data and takes an incredible long amount of time until it's getting finished. And I'm just talking about 15 or 10 seconds. That's an incredible long time. So if we would put that in the main thread, like let's say here, long operation, then we would need to wait 15 seconds right here until we would reach line 12 where it just says main thread is done. We don't want to do that. Just think of applications which have a graphical user interface, for example, and you're just blocking the actual user interface 12 seconds because that's exactly what will happen or even 15 seconds. So the user cannot interact with the user interface at all. Now that's a great scenario in which you want to create a new task, which is doing that operation in a parallel way so that the main thread can run and in another task, your long operation gets processed. Now, for our example, it will be at numbers. Let's get started. Let's create a task which runs in a separate thread. We will start using the system threading tasks namespace right here. And now let's just create a new task by saying task tasks equals to new task. Now, if we want to create a task, you can see that the constructor here takes an action. So we have to provide an action that could be a delegate. So let's create a new kind of method here and create a Lambda expression. So we don't have any parameters and we want to execute what's ever inside of the curly braces right here. Now, what we first want to do is to give us any information that we are now starting that thread. So console write line, and let's say running task in separate thread. There we go, that's the first thing. Now, next up, we want to perform our action, whatever that is, right? We are just like adding numbers, but for you, it would be maybe fetching data from a database or processing data in a machine learning algorithm or whatever crazy stuff you're doing. Now, let's console.write line again, and we wanna say result of addition, which is basically just telling us that we are uh, at the last line of this task. Basically, it means that we are finished with it or that it finished, great. Now this is how you can create a task, but it will not start. It's just like the blueprint. This is what the task should do. If you want to start that task and put it in a new thread, you have to call task.start. Now let's hover above it. Starts the task, scheduling it for execution to the current task scheduler. Awesome, let's call that one. If we now start the application, let's just think about what will happen. If we set up the task here, instead of our main uh, method, and we call task start, then inside of our main thread or from our main thread, we will simply start another thread, which will then, once it's getting started, execute what's ever inside of the task body right here. Now, in the meantime, while this is happening in an asynchronous way, our main thread is still running. It's not waiting for the task to get finished. No, after starting, while this one is running in a background or in a separate thread, not in a background, in a separate thread, right? the console write line main thread is done here will still get executed because the main thread is not waiting for the task. So it still moves on, says, okay, main thread is done. I don't have anything to do. I'm just waiting for some console read line right now. So if we start the application now, you can see that exactly this will happen. The main thread is starting. It's creating the task, is starting the task and then reaches main thread is done. Now setting up the task and starting it takes some time. So this is what you can see here, running task in separate thread after main thread is done. And then we can see the result of addition, which is 15. So great, this is what happens right now. This is how you can perform an action in a different thread without blocking the main thread. And now I wanna show you some additional tools to really understand and see the actual task amount and task structure or thread structure of your application. 
But before we move on, we have created a book which is called Tiny C Shop Projects and it helps you build up core C Shop skills by building cool projects. So definitely check it out. You can find the link in the description below or popping up in the top right corner right now. You will build a Discord chatbot, an SMTP mass email sender and for example, a secret message and crypto. So pretty cool stuff. Check it out right now. So first of all, let's set a breakpoint. Let's get started with that. If we're in line 12, you can see that here. If we start our application, we will for sure stop here. If you have no clue about breakpoints, please check out our video based on that. Great. So I just wanted to show you we can set a breakpoint. Now let's modify our debugging windows. If you now go to debug in Windows, you can only see six options, breakpoints, exceptions, output and all of that, right? So only six right here. We need some more. So if we go into debugging mode, so start the application, you can see that we have additional windows here, call stack, breakpoints, exceptions, and so much more. Now, what you want to have is threads and parallel stacks. You will not see them right now. Go to debug, go to windows, and then click on parallel stacks, first one, and second one, open up threads. There we go. Great. Now, let me remove that breakpoint for now. Let's think about what happens again. We start the application, we will get to the console right line. So what I want to do is I want to set a breakpoint right here. And I also want to set a breakpoint in line 14. So basically when our task reaches its last line of code, which is console right line, result of addition, blah, blah, blah. So let's get started with that. Let's start our application. Let's take a look at the parallel stacks window. So you can see the main thread and you can see some other default threads. Right now we are in line 19 and we have already started our task. So this is why you can see program main anonymous method right here and it's in line 12 right now. So line 12 basically means that uh, our task has already started because it wants to print out something. So if I terminate the application again and set a breakpoint in line 17, so right before we start that task, you will see that it will look different. We have four threads, but we don't have that anonymous method. So we are now in line 17. If I hit F10, I will jump into the next line of code and our task will have started then because task start will get executed. You can see that if I move forward with F10, we will get to the point where the task has started. Anonymous method, you can see that right here. We are in line 13 already. So we have printed console right line. If we take a look, we should be able to see that running task and separate thread. Awesome. That's exactly what I mean, right? Line 12, we are in line 13 right now. So we are calculating the result. If I hit F10 again, we are at console right line, line 14. We should be able to see that. There we go. At the right side, you can see line 14. This is where we are. And you can see the yellow break at uh, the yellow arrow right here. And that's indicating like we are stopping right here. So the current breakpoint, which has stopped the application right now, is pointing to this thread right here, which is highlighted by the yellow arrow. Great. Now let's F10 again. Our task is now completed. Basically everything in our application has completed because in the meantime, our main thread has also reached its end. And this is why everything's gone now because everything has finished successfully. Great. So let's start our application again and take a look at the threads window this time. So here we have our main thread again, and we have several other default threads, which are getting created when we start the application for the first time. So let's F10 again to start our uh, new task. Now you can see that we created a new thread here. It's that one Microsoft extensions anonymous method right now. If I open it up, you can see we don't have any information right now because the task has not started yet. Let's hit F10 until we get to the console right line right now in line 14. And you can see that yellow arrow again, which is telling us, oh yeah, inside of your task, we reached a breakpoint and it's pointing to this task right here with the process ID 46. 08. If I open it up, you can see we are in line 14, which is our console right line. Awesome. For sure, you can see it in the parallel tasks window. Again, we are in our new thread. So this actually proves that we have created a new thread parallel to our main thread. And we can even prove by using some debugging tools right here that the task runs in a separate thread. Awesome. So yeah, I hope you liked that video and that you have learned something new. Please make sure to give this video a thumb up and to subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any upcoming videos and definitely check out our cool C Sharp Tiny Projects book. So thanks for watching and I'll see you back next time.